Good morning. Hope everybody's wide open this morning. Or at least <laughs> breathing. Uh, I hope you're breathing this morning. Good morning, Miss Brianna. Hope you're doing better. Hope you, your tooth's doing better. I know you had some, some toothache problem. That's the hurtingest thing in the world. Back problems and teeth problems. I don't know if there's anything. Kidney stones, having babies. <laughs> and I've never done two. I've never done two of those. Never had a kidney stone. Never had a baby. <laughs> they say that's some hurting stuff. But anyway, we've been praying for you and hope you feel better. Praise the Lord. The Lord's been good to us. He's blessed us. Morning, Miss Cindy. Good to see you this morning. Everybody's jumping in here. Williamsburg, Virginia. I saw y'all was off gallivanting again. I saw last night where y'all was eating at some restaurant up in, in Virginia, and uh, I hope y'all having a good trip and enjoying yourself. Praise the Lord. Friday. Is it Friday? It's Friday. It's Friday. Everybody gets excited about Friday. <laughs> Friday's just another day of the week. <laughs> Friday's just, a, just another day. Um... Saturday's not a whole lot different than Tuesday. It's just wide open. And that's a good thing. I ain't complaining. I ain't grumbling. I ain't gropping. I is happy. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Brother Robbie. Good to see you. A few more people popping in on a Friday morning. Praise the Lord. I got on my my orange shirt this morning. You know, <laughs> my kids buy me these these shirts. My kids buy me these these colors. I'm old. Y'all figured that out yet? And I, I don't know if they're trying to, I don't know if they're trying to invigor me and brighten me up and get me, get me more flamboyant and, and vibrant. I don't know if that's their, their goal or if they put these colors on me so they can find me when I wander away from the home. <laughs> When I wander off from the old folks' home, they'll be able to see me. I think that's their goal, is <laughs> I won't be able to get away. Um, praise the Lord. I'm pretty close to that, <laughs> age-wise and mentally. Praise the Lord. So, hallelujah. Had a great night last night. It's been some rough days. Um, it's been some trying times dealing with, with, with ministry and trying to find answers. That's right, Brother Robbie. You got me. They can find me. If I wander off from the home, <laughs> they keep taking me back. I keep getting away. Um, if you got answers, if you got answers, I'd love to hear from you. How do we help young people? How do we help? students how do we help um juniors teenagers how do we help parents with with education our school system is not just broken our school system is corrupt some people have been saying that for years in years we're going to get to second thessalonians chapter one in just a minute some people have been saying for years that that the school system, the public school system was was wicked and corrupt and, and absolutely not for a Christian. And they pull their kids out. They put their kids in a Christian school or they homeschool to keep them away from the influence. And, and I'm not against that. I'm not against that at all. But then other Christians, other just as sincere, just as faithful, just as well-meaning, just as separated, just as godly Christian, both of them, both of them, they're both good Christians. This other Christian says, no, we're going to stay in the public school system. We're going to stay in the public square. We're going to put our kids in there. We're going to train our kids and teach them and let them be a witness. Now, don't start a fight on here. <laughs> if you got a comment, just hold it. Some say we pull back and separate ourselves. Others say we're supposed to be light in the darkness. 
I got Bible for both. <laughs> We're supposed to be light in the darkness. We're supposed to be in the world, not of the world. And and we're supposed to make a difference. Either way, I'm just going to say this, either way, we failed. Christians have failed. Homeschool kids, Christian school kids, public school kids, Christians are struggling. And how do, how do I, as a pastor, I want to be a good pastor. I want to be a help. I, I believe that, that Christianity is more than just a, a, a slogan. It's more than just, I believe God is more than just a, a figurehead. God is powerful. God can do. God can work. This this thing's real to me. I get emotional. I get I get I get bound into this thing. And then and then I talk about it and I say too much and I embarrass people and I'm sorry I never intended. Somebody said that 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 I put their their child on blast. I I never intend. I'm just looking for answers. I just want to help. I know that what we hide, we can't fix. And I, I'm looking for answers. I'm looking for ways to make a difference. How do we work? The Christian school is wonderful. The Christian school, the the the, the whole thing. But then you you have parents that send their kids in that they're not even Christian, but they don't want them in this. For a long time, Christian school, just, just to be honest with you, for a long time, people sent their kids to Christian school because of racism. It did, they didn't care anything about the Christ, Christian part. They just didn't want them in the public school. They, they, wanted, them, they wanted them isolated. And where, how do we make the difference? How does the church make the difference? Where is the power of God? Where, where, is, where is the hand of God in, in our children, in our parents? Where, where is the work of God and, and, and changing families? I'm, I'm not throwing rocks at anybody. I'm not throwing rocks at anybody, but you do not. You, you do not bail out on a marriage and then say, I'm, well, I'm trying to, to fix it. No. You, you got to go by God's law. You got to go by, by God's rules. You got to stay in. If you want God's blessings, then then, then there's a framework, <laughs> and we, we have to do that. Morning, brother Joey. Morning, brother Benny. Morning, Mister Reese. I've seen some other people, but you don't pass by me, brother Rob. I can't read comments. I, man, my 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 brain and all this trying to get going at the same time this time of morning <laughs> but pray for me i want i want to be a good pastor i want to be a help i want to be a good shepherd an under shepherd christ is a shepherd but an under shepherd i want to lead the right way satan's attacking the devil's attacking and and we need the lord we need the lord god's been good to us This thing's falling down this morning. Anyhow, 2 Thessalonians. This is a, 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 a one-a-day vitamin. That's what we're doing here every morning. Try to get here at 730 and try to be done in 30 minutes. <laughs> Don't accomplish either one of those very often, but we're trying. We're uh, all the way. We've done Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. We've done 1 Thessalonians now. If you've been with me every morning, if you've read a chapter a day, some of you, uh, just be honest with you, some of you's read more Bible in the last five or six weeks than than three or four weeks than, than you have in a long time. And this is good stuff. Second Thessalonians, Paul's writing back. We're gonna read the letter. Well, let's let's read it, then we'll go in it. It's only thirteen verses, twelve verses. And uh, so let's let's get started this morning, all right? Uh, verse number one, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus under the church of the Thessalonians and God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We're bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God 
for which ye also suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord, from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints, to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray also always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith uh, with power that the name, man, I'm butchering this this morning. Y'all hear me? It, look at verse 11. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of his calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking at Second Thessalonians chapter 1. The Most of the commentaries, most of the writings and things I looked at, uh, Second Thessalonians was written shortly, very shortly, after First Thessalonians. Paul went into Thessalonica. He was ran out of town. He had to leave. And then he's writing back. Remember, he sent Timothy in. Now he's writing back to the Thessalonians that I'm, I'm mixed up here with, with another book. He went in. He's never been to Thessalonica. Am I right? Paul, nope, I'm right. He went in. He was driven out by the unbelieving Jews. Uh, going back and looking at my notes from, from four or five days ago. He couldn't go back to Thessalonica, so he sent Timothy. Timothy comes back and brings a report. And Paul then writes the book and, and the letter of First Thessalonians. It's important that we say book because it's in the Bible. It's also important that we say letter because this is a letter to the Thessalonican church. And we're going to look at the word letter again in the second chapter and, and see where these letters have, have been confused and, and some things have gone on. But that'll be tomorrow. That'll be on Saturday morning. So here he wrote the letter to Thessalonica and the church received it. Now word has come back to Paul again. There's some different things going on. There's some problems coming up. There's some false teachers that have stepped in. And so he's writing the book of Second Thessalonians, writing the letter back to the church again, addressing some of those problems. In chapter number one, we find Paul is praising the church. We find Paul is, is giving a promise to the church, and he's also praying for the church. One of the things that sticks out at me when you read this and you look at this is that the, 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 the words of Paul, <clears throat> he is praising them, but he's praising them and, and building them up because of their testimony their testimony. The word has come back. He's heard. He keeps talking about in all the churches around. He talks about how that their faith in, in First Thessalonians, their faith had spread abroad throughout all Macedonia. That people had heard and, and, and were growing. And so when you see this here, Paul comes and, and now he says in verse number three, he said, we're bound to thank God all the way for you, brethren, as it is me, because your faith groweth exceedingly. What is what is their testimony? Paul says their testimony is that their faith is growing. Their faith is building. The faith is is some some first Thessalonians chapter one. Second Thessalonians chapter one. I'm sorry, Brother Benny. First Thessalonians, I probably said it wrong fifteen times. I get y'all, if you know me, you know. You know. <laughs> uh, if I said it wrong, I'm sorry. Second Thessalonians chapter number one. And I'll say that and then I'll say in chapter number no. Uh, but anyway, they are here, Paul is praising the church. He opens up his letter with praise. Dr. Brown taught us when we preach to, to make a sandwich out of it. When, 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 you, when you preach, you, you, you want to give positive, then you want to give correction and, and, and anything negative, and then you want to end on a high note. 
you, you want to end on a good thing. When you read 2 Thessalonians, you're going to find out Paul is praising them. In chapter number two, he's going to go in and correct some things and scold some people and, and give, and then chapter number three, he's going to come back and, and we got the bread on both ends. Here, he, he's, he's praising them. He's thanking them. He's, he's lifting them up. And, and the, the whole reason that he's praising them is from what he's heard. It's what's come back. It, it, it's what he's, it, it's their testimony. They have a testimony that their faith is growing. Uh, they have a testimony. If, if you continue to look at verse number three, and the charity of every one of you toward each other aboundeth. He, their their faith is growing, and their their love is abounding. Where in where in chapter in where in First Thessalonians? Let me get it right. Some of this ain't planned at all. Have y'all figured this out? It just pops in and then it, it kind of spews out. <laughs> and and y'all get that. Where he, he says in verse number, chapter number one of First Thessalonians and verse number eight, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God were to spread abroad so that we need not speak anything. And 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 so he says here, that your your faith is is being made known, it's spreading, it's going. But when he comes to Second Thessalonians chapter one, he says that your faith is growing. Your faith groweth exceedingly. Their faith is abounding. Somebody said years ago that faith is like a muscle. The the more you exercise it, the more you use it, the more faith grows. The more you try to squash faith, the more it expands. The more you try to contain faith, the more that persecution always brings growth in, in the Christian life. Persecution always brings growth in the church. Everywhere you see the church, from the book of Acts, chapter number two, right on through, everywhere you see the church persecuted, it grows, it spreads, it expands, it abounds. And that's what's happening. These, these Christians in, Thessalon in Thessalonica are being persecuted. They're going through troubles. They're going through, through through difficulties. And yet they are abounding. Their faith, their faith groweth exceedingly. And then it says the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. That their love for each other, the more they're persecuted, the more their faith grows, the more struggles they go through, the more their faith grows, and the more they love one another the dearer they become to each other. They, they become close to one another. He gives them a promise when you come down to verse five and six. Uh, verse number four, he says, so we glory, we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. He said, we are bragging on you. We're glorying over you. We, we, we're telling people about you. And then in verse five, which is a manifest, manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. He said, this is a, a, a preparation. Your trials are preparing you. Your trials are preparing you to, to be rewarded. Your trials are going to be rewarded. Your trials, let, let me see if I, your, your persecution, your persecution is going to be profitable. He said, you're suffering, you're going through these persecutions, you're being attacked and, and, and all these things. He said, but you're standing and you're growing and you're loving one another. And here, I'm just telling you, Paul says that, that it's going to be worth it after all. It's going to be good in the end. There's going to be a reward. Verse number five, he said, this is preparation for, for the future blessing in the kingdom. He said, you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. But then he also says that, that this is preparation for the persecutor. <laughs> let, let me say one thing to you. Your life, you may not see a whole lot of blessing. You may not see a whole lot of product. But if anything else, your witness is one day going to be used against those that persecute you. Your testimony, your witness, your faithfulness is one day going to be held up and and there's going to be people and I don't I don't joy in this I don't I don't rejoice in this but one day those people that deny God and fly in God's face one day those people that reject God are going to stand accountable to God and your testimony your persecution your testimony will be used 
to show those people, see, you should have, you could have. If you would have, you wouldn't be, be cast off into hell. It's going to be used. It's a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. God's going to pay them back. God's going, God's going to get even. And, and so he tells the church here, he's praising the church for their testimony. He's promising the church that the things that they're going through are, are going, to, going, to, going to pay off one day. It's going to be profitable. And then he prays for the church. He prays for the church. We'll get through with a little outline here. He prays and he says down in verse uh, 11, wherefore also we pray always for you. And there again, you cannot go through the church epistles, these letters written to church, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, Second. You can't go through those these letters without seeing Paul praying continuously, praying faithfully, praying fervently for these believers. How often do we pray for other churches? How often do we pray? One, we, oh, we pray about our ministry. We pray about our, our persecution. We pray about our needs. We, we, we pray about what's pushing us and pressuring us. How often do we pray for other churches? How often do we pray? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just being honest. I don't have this written down. How often do we pray for other churches? people that are that are in the in the battle, people that are in the ministry, people that are in the Christian life. How often do we pray for each other? Every time Paul writes a letter to one of these churches, he's not praying always. What he said in verse 11, wherefore also we pray always for you. What's he praying? That our God would count you worthy of this calling. This calling. What's he been talking about? Persecution. This calling, the Christian life is a struggle. This calling, <laughs> he, he said that he would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Why? That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him and according, uh, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, we're praying that God would strengthen you. We're praying that God's power would be real in you, that he'd strengthen you. You can stand, you can serve, you, you can stay faithful. God's power is real. He said, I'm praying always for you that the power of God, the power of God would work. Notice he, he goes on and he says that, that the purpose of God be accomplished in these people, that God's got a purpose. God's got a plan. God's got a, 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 a plan. He's got a purpose is God's purpose being accomplished in you and through you? That's what Paul's writing to these people. He said, I'm praying that God's power would strengthen you, that God's purpose would be fulfilled in you. And then in verse number 11 or 12, that God's person, the Lord Jesus, that God's person would be glorified by you. The life you live glorifying Christ, the life you live lifting up, magnifying the Lord. First Thessalonians, second Thessalonians chapter one. I want to, I want to go back and I want to take just a minute and I don't have my watch and my phone don't show me my time when it's on the stupid thing. So I have no idea. So if it takes an hour, it takes an hour. What's your testimony? What's your testimony? The testimony of this church the testimony of this assembled group of people. Y'all with me? Stay with me. The testimony was that their faith groweth exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. That's the word that's coming back to Paul. Their faith is growing and their love is growing. What's the testimonies of our churches? What's the testimonies of our assembled? What, what do we hear what do we hear about churches? Thank you, Brother Jim. What's the testimony of our churches? Oh, that church has got a great music ministry. Oh, you ought to hear that preacher. That 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 man, that guy can can expound and abound and profound. Man, he's something. <laughs> What's the testimony of our churches? What's the testimony of Christianity in America today? I, I can't speak for other countries. I've never been outside the United States. I haven't been outside Georgia a whole lot. 
really happened. If you, you see these things where they list the states everybody's been to, it, it embarrassed me to fill one of them out. <laughs> I ain't been to very many. I ain't even drove through very many. I flew over some going to South Dakota. I hadn't been out. I, I, I don't know what the world situation. I don't know what they do in South America. I don't know what they do in Africa. I don't other than what I see here. But what, what's the testimony of the church in America? What's the testimony? What, what, what are people hearing about us? What are people hearing about you? The Thessalonians are being persecuted. The, the Bible speaks of their afflictions and the things they're going through. But in all of that, their faith is growing. It looks like to me, and, and, and if I'm wrong, somebody correct me. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm more humble now than I've ever been. I'll just be honest with you. And I'm proud of it. <laughs> I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm less confident in me than I ever have been before. But I'm also more confident in him than I ever have been in my life. I fail daily. But I want to ask you a question. Where is the testimony of the church today? What are we known for? What is our church known for? What are people hearing about us? I'm not trying to be prideful. I'm not trying to be arrogant. I'm not trying to point the fingers. What are people hearing about our churches? Where is the persecution and where is the faith that groweth exceedingly? Our churches, and this is what I started to say just a minute ago, if I see anything in America today, I see a faith that's dwindling and a faith that's dying. If I see anything in our churches, I see Christians falling away. Hang on, we'll get to chapter two tomorrow. If I see anything, I see Christianity dying off. I know that that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. I know the church is going to go through, but the church is not going to be this fat, flourishing, fine thing that everybody thinks it ought to be. I think the church comes out the other side, slim down, in fighting mode. God's purging the church. But I see a faith that's dying. I see a faith that's, that, that, that's dwindling. I see a faith that's drying up. Paul wrote to these and said, your testimony is that your faith groweth, not just groweth, but groweth exceedingly. That was their testimony. And, and with their faith growing, with their persecution, with everything going on, they still loved each other more. It abounded. Charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. What's my goal today? God grow my faith. Now, 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 before you jump up and pray that prayer, remember it was persecution. It was persecution that's bringing this growth. Before you jump up, God grow my faith. Help me love one another. Help me love others. Help me abound in my love. In, in, in 1 Thessalonians, Paul prayed that their love for one another and for, for the brethren and for those without would abound, would abound. Praise the Lord. Brother Jim, good to see you this morning. Miss Stella Smith, Brother Benny, Miss Kathy, glad you finally made it. Just get up whenever you can. I understand. <laughs> We do these things, and some people watch them later on in the day, and uh, I try to send them out on Messenger. Let me ask you this. I hadn't said this in, in, a, in a week. Like this, share it. Give me, give me, like Brother CT said, give me some of them hearts and likes and all that stuff. And, and somehow or another, the more people that like it, the more people that share it, the more people that look at it, the more people get an opportunity to see it. Uh, it's some kind of way the way Facebook works, and I don't understand all that. But if you will... Uh, do that just so people, and, and, and let me say this, don't like it, don't share it if it don't help. If you don't think this is something that helps somebody else, <laughs> then don't like it, don't share it. And and if you just got up and you turned your, your, your device, your phone, your iPad, your whatever you're watching me on, if you just got up this morning to look at this pretty face, 
then just keep doing that. I understand it's attractive. It's it's like addictive. You you if you just if you just got up to see this, then then I understand. You don't have to share that with anybody. You just keep me to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> y'all got something to laugh at now <laughs> hearts and likes and <laughs> <yee-haw>. <laughs> thank you bud jim <laughs> it's a mutual attraction you know what i mean <laughs> i never claimed to be pretty never not one time i'll tell you this when i was born when I, that, I don't know what they called it. I'm sure there's a medical name for it. And I don't, you don't have to, to train me. But when I was born, I had a crease down the middle of my head. And, and I had a, a fold. I had a canyon. <laughs> no brain. I've been telling y'all. Y'all ain't going to tell me nothing. I know. No brain in there. Somehow or another, my head got squeezed. <laughs> Whether they grabbed me with a pair of pliers or what they did. But I had this crease down the middle of my head. And they brought me out. And my mama said, oh, he's so beautiful. They brought me out and they showed me to the family. And my granddaddy, my mama's daddy, was standing there. And his first words to my daddy was, y'all ain't going to keep that, are you? (laughs) Y'all ain't going to keep that, are you? Yep, they kept me. And now you got to look at me. Y'all ain't going to keep that. I've never claimed to be pretty. Never, never. And so here we are. If this helps, share it with somebody. If I can make you laugh, laugh. The world's going to punch you in the face when you walk out the door. Somebody's going to cut you off in traffic. Somebody's going to get your order wrong for breakfast. Somebody's going to lie, steal, cheat, and, and abuse you. But is your faith growing exceedingly? And is your love abounding? Praise the Lord. All right. I love y'all every one of you. And I'm praying. I ain't sure what I'm doing or how I'm doing, but we do it. Amen.